Good day everyone. In this video, we will discuss about a scenario where uh, primary key constraint uh, is missing on one of the tables in the subscriber server for a transactional replication. Yep. You try uh, applying the snapshot again after uh, reinitializing uh, the subscription, but you still see that for uh, that particular table, the primary key constraint, even though it is present on the uh, publisher server, for the same table on the subscriber end, the primary key constraint is not uh, present. So we will uh, look into this uh, issue and then we will try to understand uh, what could have uh, gone wrong where the primary key constraint was missed while uh, creating that table as part of the snapshot. Let's get started. So we have this uh, publisher and distributor server called JBS Wiki and the subscriber server is um, uh, JBS wiki slash JBS. Yep. So we have um, uh, the replication already configured and uh, I'm uh, very much interested on this particular publication. Let's uh, look at this uh, publication Pluto one. If you look at the article here, you'll be able to see that there is an uh, article, just one article called table six. Let's look at the property for this particular article. If you look at the properties, you will be able to see that um, uh, action if name in use is basically drop existing object and create one. Yeah. And uh, if you look at um, uh, the primary key uh, constraint, for example, uh, if you look at the foreign key constraint is set to false, check constraint is set to false. But if you look at the cluster index, copy cluster index, it is set to true. So uh, it is all default. We have not changed anything here. Yep. So this is the uh, current, current uh, setting for uh, this particular uh, publication. So now what I'm going to do is like I'm um, uh, going to uh, uh, create the subscriber here. Yeah. Let me create a, a subscription here and then uh, select this publication and then uh, add the subscriber server here which would be JBS wiki slash JBS and then what we'll do is like we will um, select everything as default here and then allow uh, uh, the snapshot to run yeah so let's start it so if you uh, see here uh, currently uh, the subscription is getting created now it is created now what I'll do I will go to the replication folder and then uh, make sure that uh, everything uh, is done as far as the uh, initial sync is concerned on Pluto one. So let's go there. If you see here, uh, the snapshot for one article is completed. There are no replicated transactions for the log reader agent. And then if you look at uh, uh, the distribution agent, everything is uh, sent across. Let's put in a, a tracer token and ensure everything is sent. Now, if you see here, The tracer token has uh, gone through. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on a uh, new query window. Let's first refresh the tables here. So we have this uh, table created here. So let's click on a new query window. And then what we'll do is like, uh, let's uh, look at this particular table. So if you see here, we don't have the primary key constraint created. Uh, we know that for the transactional replication to work, the publisher server should basically have the uh, primary key constraint created. Yeah, you need to have that uh, primary key constraint. So let's let's verify that. We know that it will be definitely there on the publisher, but let's verify that. If you see here, we have this primary key constraint created here. Yeah, we have not done any changes. We just um, uh, applied the snapshot. And if you see here, on the subscriber server after um, completing the snapshot, we are not able to see the primary key constraint. This particular thing creates a lot of issues. Yeah, the first thing is like it basically uh, uh, brings down the overall overall because for example, it is one uh, article. So we were able to uh, find it. For example, if you have a publication with several articles, it would be like, uh, uh, instantly, it will not be possible for us to check each and every article and see if uh, the primary key constraint would be uh, created or not. Yeah. So in this case, uh, right now, what I'm seeing is like um, uh, the primary key constraint is not created. Also, 
there are no errors per se like the snapshot agent completed fine everything completed fine so what i'm going to do now i'm going to look at the snapshot location yeah so let's look at the snapshot location so this is the snapshot location and i'm going to look at the script and verify if uh, the script contains the information related to this particular cluster index yeah so let's go to this unc path so time is like 3 7 pm so maybe like this is the one 242 so let's open that and then if you see a table six is here so let's uh, look at uh, uh, the queries one by one so we have this idx directly so let's look at that uh, idx file and then see if it is related to yeah if you see here this script is specifically for creating the uh, primary key constraint yeah so this primary key constraint uh, query is there so now what I'm going to do is like the script has got the script uh, the script has got the definition for creating the primary key constraint so it was definitely executed but not sure what happened uh, we were not able to um, create it so now what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, uh, run this query on the subscriber server and then see if it gets created. If it gets created, then there is some problem with replication. If it doesn't get created, then uh, we can understand. Let's look at the reason if it doesn't get created. Okay, now if you see here, it is basically telling like there is already an object named this primary key constraint in the database. Yeah, so the primary key constraint uh, should be. Uh, unique as far as um, a database is concerned okay so what I understand is like uh, there is another table here in this uh, uh, database which basically has uh, this primary key constraint already in place either you need to change this but it's going to be uh, every time job yeah so now what we need to do is like the name here seems to be okay but there is some other table which has got the same constraint maybe someone scripted out uh, uh, the table and then uh, maybe uh, ran it without changing the name for the primary key constraint yeah so what we'll have to do is like we will have to check each and every table and then we need to ensure that um, there is uh, no other uh, table that has got this uh, constraint uh, with the same name let's uh, try executing this query yep so I'm basically like um, joining sys tables with uh, sys dot key constraints and I'm looking if there are any other tables with the same um, uh, name of uh, pk underscore table six whatsoever yeah so let's execute it and if I see here what I'm able to see is like uh, table seven basically has that yeah so uh, what I'm able to see is like uh, this table 7 what I feel is like uh, someone um, uh, maybe scripted out table 6 and then just changed the name to table 7 and executed it that is what I feel here yeah so now uh, the solution would be uh, to either drop this table if it is not used or you basically have to drop the constraint and then uh, recreate it that's what you need to do yeah so now what I'm going to do I'm going to take the second approach that is uh, I will uh, uh, drop the uh, primary key constraint yeah and then uh, I will uh, recreate it with a different name that's what I'm going to do yeah the problem is that you need to be very careful on that if it is going to be a production because uh, if you remove the primary key and then uh, if some other data gets in then it's it could be a problem so it is better uh, you take all the required precautions and then you basically have to uh, uh, um, uh, 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 drop the uh, constraint and recreate it I will click on this table designer and then get this uh, query here yeah alter table uh, table 7 and then drop the constraint okay so let's close it let's not do it from the GUI yeah let's do it from using the TSQL let's run that it's completed now what I'm going to do I'm going to create this here the primary key constraint for table 7 let's rename it appropriately yeah so let's execute that so now it is created yeah now what I'm going to do I'm uh, going to um, 
I just have uh, one table here, so I'm going to reinitialize this uh, uh, publication and then going to apply the snapshot. If uh, you have multiple articles, then I would suggest like to remove that article and then uh, 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 add it back. But you just need to be very careful to make sure that uh, allow anonymous and uh, um, immediate sync is set to false, or else it will uh, apply. Uh, the snapshot for the for all the articles in that publication yeah in my case I just have one article so I don't have any issues so I'm just reinitializing it and then let's uh, wait for uh, the snapshot to complete once the snapshot completes what we'll do is like we will uh, check the uh, uh, table and then see if we can find the primary key constraint let's uh, uh, insert a tracer token so let's wait for it to complete uh, publish it to distributor is done so everything looks good now what i'm going to do i'm going to check on the secondary server that is your subscriber server jbs wiki jbs so i have this uh, table six i'm going to press alt f1 then if you see yeah this time the primary key constraint is created so one thing as far as the replication is concerned, uh, it was definitely a miss wherein uh, the primary key constraint was not created. There was an error, uh, but the snapshot agent completed. But I uh, showed you guys like how we would um, look at um, the snapshot folder and then get that um, script for the primary key and then try creating it on the subscriber. And that way we were able to clearly understand what the problem was and we were able to resolve the issue. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.